so far this has all been the build-up for the activation of the laser. So we've had the uh, cannulation of the vein, the precise placement of the laser fibre and the application of tumescence all leading up to the point where we can activate the laser and treat the vein by endothermal ablation, a procedure in which we heat the vein from the inside to a temperature at which it's uh, closed, sterilized, cauterized and devitalized. So Jane now, who's in charge of the laser uh, safety, is asking us to wear safety glasses. So we're going to put laser safety glasses on. Um, could you enable the laser, please? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, so we're now going to deliver energy. If I could have a swab, please, Pam. So we've, uh, Jane has checked the power settings on the machine. She's called them out to make sure we're all aware of the power settings. She's made sure that the doors are closed, that the uh, sign outside says do not enter, there's laser in progress, that we're all wearing laser safety glasses, and uh, she has pressed the enable button. Uh, if there are any problems, Jane is in charge of, change, of turning off the laser, uh, and she's in charge of safety. So, at any time, if you feel a discomfort, I want to know, and the best way to let me know is to say in a loud voice, ouch. Now you might feel at the beginning of the procedure, you might feel a little crackle uh, in your thigh. I describe it sometimes as sitting on a bag of crisps, it's that sort of feeling. It shouldn't be painful, but it, uh, if I don't tell you about it, it might give you a startle. So right at the beginning, you might, as I say, feel a little pop and crackle. You might feel nothing at all. Now the laser is delivering a certain amount of energy per second, um, measured in watts, and in the background you may be able to hear a little musical note which indicates the laser is in action, and it has also a metronome beat. Every five seconds there's a little 0.2 second pause, and that tells us that um, there's a five second marker, and by withdrawing the catheter at a certain rate, the catheter is marked in centimeters. If I withdraw the catheter in a certain rate, in time with the metronome, I can be sure of delivering the correct amount of energy. So I'm concentrating a little bit on the speed with which I'm withdrawing the catheter in relation to the metronome auditory signal that I am hearing in the background. At the end of the procedure, Jane will have a record of the length of vein that we have treated, and there'll also be a record of the total amount of energy delivered by the laser equipment. So by a simple calculation, dividing the total amount of energy delivered by the length of vein treated, we can calculate the number of joules of energy delivered to each centimetre of vein. Experts vary as to the correct amount of energy that should be delivered um, to the vein, but based on my reading of the literature and my own personal experience, for a 1470 nanometer laser delivered through a radial fibre using the Biolitex system, I aim to deliver between 50 and 70 joules per centimetre. The evidence in the literature would suggest that this gives the best outcome in terms of vein ablation rates, together with a very kind and gentle post-procedure recovery with very little discomfort afterwards. Certainly my own personal experience of this procedure uh, is that the discomfort is minimal, both during and after. Um, and um, it's certainly a great alternative now to surgical stripping. Indeed, I haven't done any surgical stripping now for nearly a decade and this procedure is the treatment of choice. Endothermal ablation, 
that is heating the vein from the inside using laser energy or radio frequency energy is the number one choice now for the treatment of superficial vein reflux caused by reflux in the great saphenous vein, the vein that we're treating this morning now, or the small saphenous vein, um, the vein at the back of the calf. Having reached a certain point, I need to withdraw the catheter introducer um, and continue the laser to the final portion of the vein. Gently withdrawing the laser fibre at a rate that is in keeping with the metronome auditory signal in the background. Very shortly we will reach the end of the procedure. Jane will disable the laser equipment before I finally withdraw the laser fibre from the leg to confirm that uh, there's no possibility of the laser being activated outside the patient's vein. At that point, we will then take off our laser goggles and the procedure will be complete. Uh, so far, this procedure has taken just over 30 minutes. Uh, that's somewhat slower than we would normally do because I've been talking and demonstrating. But as you can see, it, in real time, it, it's about 30 minutes. The cannula is now very close to the exit point. I'm taking great care to make sure I don't inadvertently withdraw the cannula completely. And I'm going to stop there. At this point, Jane will disable the laser fiber machine. We'll make a note, it's 3766 joules delivered to 49 centimetres of vein. Disable. Stand by. 3766. That's it, and you can turn it off. There we go. There we are. So this patient's procedure is complete. I'm going to apply a little bit of local pressure to the uh, puncture site and the uh, patient is smiling off camera. I'm going to apply a plaster to this area and apply a compression stocking. The patient will probably wear the stocking for 48 hours and thereafter uh, he can wear it as he sees fit. Uh, some people get on very well with the stocking and they wear it for longer. Some people uh, don't like wearing the stocking, they can take it off at that point. Thank you.